So as much fun as it is to move the value 8 into EAX and then copy that 8 into EBX, I want to do something a little more interesting than that. I told you your CPU is just an overgrown calculator that can calculate um, things extremely quickly, so let's, let's, let's do just that. First of all, let me teach you about the semicolon. I can type whatever I like after a semicolon, and the... And the uh, assembler will just ignore it. This is what is what we consider to be a comment. So it can help me to write some things down to remember about my program, and or I can communicate to other programmers working in the same file. In other languages, you're probably typically used to doing forward slash, forward slash, if you know any other languages. And that's commenting in most uh, mainstream languages. But in assembly, we do the semicolon. Watch down here. I'm going to hit Control-Shift-B. You see that the build, it still succeeds because the assembler ignored all this. If I take the semicolon off, control shift B, you can see it's saying, hey, I, e, yeah, yeah. okay, so semicolon, good thing. Let's, uh, I'm holding down control and hitting delete to delete uh, several, or to, if you hold down control and hit delete, it will delete an entire word at once. Let's do a more interesting, let's, let's do an expression, eight plus 4 minus 2 plus 3. Hopefully you're familiar with your order of operations from math. I believe I learned this in third grade. Uh, but essentially, the plus sign and the minus sign, they have the same uh, level of order of operations. In programming, we call that precedence. They have the same precedence um, as each other. So then we just go left to right. So first thing we need to do is the 8 plus 4. That will turn into a 12. And then the 12 minus 2 will give us 10. Then we're going to take the 10 and add it to 3, which will give us 13 as the end result. So let me back that up here. And also, let me get my drawing program back up. Remember, we have the CPU, and there's several registers on there we saw in the previous program. Um, but I'm going to, to do this program, I'm going to use the four what we call general purpose registers. And let me draw them right here. Remember, we're on a 32-bit platform, so each of the register values are 32 bits wide. This is EAX. This will be EBX. This is ECX. E e <laughs> DX. And you may think, oh, they just named them A, B, C, and D. But the letters actually have meaning, which we'll get into um, as we explore more instructions of the assembly language. The A, for example, means accumulator, which is a good way to accumulate values, which we're kind of doing here. Uh, but really, we can kind of do whatever we want to, and I'm, I am going to do whatever I want to in this program uh, to just demonstrate what's going on. Let's delete the old instructions from the last video. And uh, I'm going to kind of do this the long way, but the reason why is because I want to illustrate uh, use of all these registers. So here we go. Move into EAX the value 8. Move into EBX the value 4. Move into ECX the value 2. Move into EDX the value 3. So hopefully you're recognizing that the 8 I'm putting there, the 4 I'm putting there, the 2 and the 3 like so. Let me erase all that. So that will change these values over here inside the registers to an 8, 4, 2, and 3. And now what we need to do is add these two. And then once we've added them, uh, we need to subtract this value from the result, which will be 12. And then, and then once we have that, we need to add the 3. So let's just kind of make a plan of attack here. Uh, 8 plus 4. Let's let's work our way downwards as much as possible. So I'm going to say here, uh, and I'm just putting another white line in here just for readability. I'm going to say add EBX EAX. So what that does is it reads the value from EAX, adds it to the value of EBX, and stores the result in EBX. So it's kind of like I'm saying add the value of EAX to EBX. Alright, and when I do that, then it will say A plus 4 is 12, and then this 4, oops, that was kind of a little too much, that 4 will change into a 12. Alright, so that'll be our 12. Wrap this up into a 12. 
And then I need to subtract 2, which we stored in ECX. So I'll, let's, let's see how we're going to do that. I'm going to say sub from EBX, the value in ECX. And again, same result. It's going to subtract uh, 2 from 12, but it will store the end result in EBX. So our 12 will turn into a 10. And then, so all that collapses into a 10. And then we need to add the 3, which we stored in EDX. So, and, and there's really no order I have to do this in. It's just up to me as the programmer to decide. But I'm going to say add into EDX, uh, EBX, because that's where our 10 is at. So then that, again, will take 10 plus 3 and store the result in EDX. I could have certainly swapped these and said EBX, EDX, but then the result would be stored in EBX instead of EDX. I really don't care. It's up to you. I just need to know as the programmer that's where my target value is. I'm going to control Z this back so our end result will be in E, D, X. All right. Dun, 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 dun. Let's uh, clear off the screen here. Hit F11, which will start a build, and then also start the debugger. We get our yellow line here. Control Alt D. Bring up the disassembly window so we can see the native instructions on the CPU. Hit F11 to jump into our assembly code, the do it procedure. F11. And here we go. Here's our code. So, one nice, one good way if you're working with this, uh, is, is not think about what this is doing. Think more about what, what will change. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Every line, one by one, as I hit F11. Before I hit F11, I'm going to think, what will change? All right, I can tell you what it's going to do. It's going to move 8 into EAX, but what will change and how will it change? Well, that will change the value of EAX to an 8. Now, how is that different than just saying it will move 8 into EAX? Well, as we get into these adds and subtracts, You'll see why. Okay, so EAX will change to an 8. Here's EAX, F11. There we go. Very good. EBX will change to a 4. Very good. ECX will change to a 2. And EDX will change to a 3. Very cool. Now, add EAX to EBX. Well, EAX is 8. EBX is 4. So that will change EBX, the left operand, into a 12, which is actually, watch this, watch EBX, watch this, F11, oh, it's C. <laughs> this is the part where you should not have skipped the binary numbers video playlist. All right, we're dealing with hexadecimal here. That's the view we get here of the registers. And so if you don't understand hexadecimal, go to the binary numbers playlist and uh, learn, and learn about and ramp up on your hexadecimal. But C is a 12. And hex, so I'm happy that that did what I wanted it to do. Now subtract from EBX the value in ECX. Well, it looks like we have a two here in ECX. I'm going to subtract that from a C. So EBX will change again. I have to think. I can tell you what it's going to do. It's going to subtract ECX from EBX. But more importantly, think as a programmer, how will anything change? Well, EBX will change to a. Can you think of it? What's C minus two? It's 10 or A in hex. Okay, and then we want to add EDX to EBX. So EDX is right here. This is a 3. We're going to add that to EBX. So A plus 3, what will that give us? In hex, that's, well, that's 10 plus 3 is 13. So in hex, that is a D. Now, what will it change? Well, DX is the target operand the left operand, so EDX will change to a, a D. There you go, right there. And then you can see we've jumped into all this other code that I don't worry about. But our result is D, which is 13, which uh, if we go back to our, our assembly code here, let, let's collapse this again. 8 plus 4 is 12, minus 2, so 12 minus 2, well, that gives us 10, and then 10 plus 3 is 13, or in hex, that is a D, Remember, we prefix hexadecimal numbers with the 0x. So that is the correct result. That's the result I wanted, and uh, I, it's stored in EDX. Again, I could swap EDX and EBX, and then the D would be an EBX instead of EDX. Wow. 
What a program. Okay, this is not the most optimal way to accomplish what we were doing here. The next video, real quickly, I'm just going to show you a faster way of doing it. Uh, this is assembly language, by the way, and we're as close to the processor as we can get, so we should write the most optimal code we can to squeeze out as much uh, processor uh, as possible.